Again, welcome to Data Structure and Algorithm course CS435. And this lecture presents sorting algorithms. So we're going to start with selection, insection, and also bubble sorting. So our main objective is to go through selection sort, insection sort, and bubble sorting algorithms. Then the complexity of the three sorting algorithms. So first, why study sorting? Here we say sorting is a classic subject in computer science. And there are three main reasons why study sorting algorithms. First, sorting algorithms shows many creative approaches to problem solving. And these approaches can be applied to solve other problems. Second, sorting algorithms are good for practicing fundamental programming techniques using selection statement, loops, method, and array. And sorting algorithms are excellent example to demonstrate algorithm performance. It's very easy, again, to find or to evaluate the performance of the sorting algorithms. In this course, we are going to study at least a minimum around seven different sorting algorithms. Then we do the comparison or the, the time complexity of each algorithm. This lectures will cover the first basic trace sorting algorithm and also easy to implement. That's again, the selection, insection, and bubble. But since these three algorithms are very easy and basic, their time complexity is worse than the remaining sorting algorithm we shall go through. Example will be the radius or quick sorting and also the mesh sorting. So we start with the selection sort. Here we say selection sort orders a list of values by continuously or repeatedly putting a particular value into, into its final position. So let's be more specific. Uh, so the algorithm, first thing we do, we find the smallest value in the list. So we have a list of items and we want to set it using the selection sort method. The first step, find the smallest value in the list. Then switch it with the value in the first position. Then find the next smallest value in the list. Switch it with the value in the second position. We are going to repeat this until we reach the end of the list or the items. So this is the algorithm. Again, sort a list by selecting the smallest element in the unsorted portion of the list. Then move this smallest element to the top of the list. So we can see that selection sort is one of the basic and easy sorting algorithm. Uh, we have a list of items look for the smallest. So we scan through the, all the items, find the smallest value, then switch it with the first value in the list, move to the next item, look for the next smallest value, put it as a second. So we would repeat this step until we finish. So let's see the example with sorting five items here. So here we have three, nine, six, one, two, these items are not sorted yet. So selection sort said the first thing we do, we should scan through the list of the item from beginning to the end, then find the smallest item, then switch it with the first item in the list. Here we are doing an increasing order or ascending order sorting. So when we went through the item, we saw three, uh, one is the smallest. So now we swap one with three. So now we'll be, one will be in the front and three will take the position of one, previous one position. So still we go through the list again, the smallest item we find again was two. Now we swap two with nine because that's the second position. Then we go through the list again, we saw six, three, nine, three is the smallest, we swap with six, so that is the third. So we can see at this stage, one, two, three sorted, remaining the last two. But when we went through the list, we have only two items, six and nine, six is in the right position. So we leave it there, 
and nine also is in the right position, we leave it. So selection sort, two steps. Go through the items, find the smallest value, swap it with the first item. Go through again, find the smallest value, put it as a second position. We do this to the end of the items that we are sorting. So again, this is the coding. This again, this is implementation using Java. So our method name is selection sort. It takes one argument or parameter, an array, the name of the array is data. The data type is generic here. So first thing we find, we declare variable name mean. This is where we are going to swap with our mean, I mean the temp. So we have int mean, and then we have the temp data type is generic T. So here we need a for loop to scan through the item. So the first for loop is to get the first item. So when, for example, the index will start from zero, again, this is error implementation. The index start from zero, then we go less than one, the size. We know in Java length, we give us the size of the array. So if the array have 10 items, length will be 10, but the index will be from zero to nine. So here, that's why we have data dot length minus one. Then we increment. So the first for loop is to go through the items. So now when we get the first item, we move to the second for loop. If there's a space, uh, we go to the second follow now when we go through the scan second follow this is where we are going to scan through all the item and find the minimum value then we swipe it so we have the variable we assign index to mean then we scan the next value the scan dot and uh, data dot length we increment it so now what we are doing we are comparing the present value that we scan with the data mean. First, the first value, we already have it. So we are comparing it with the second value, third value. We will do this to the end of the, the array list. Then when we scan through to the end, we are going to return the minimal value. Each time we scan, the method here and the statement here, if data scan, dot com, uh, compared to data mean is less than zero. If this is less than zero, again, this means that the first data scan is less than the data mean. So we have to assign the scan to the mean. So the first value again, we assign the index to the mean. So we are checking from the second. So we compare the second with the first. Uh, if it's not true, then we move to uh, move to the next. And we will go through the list until the scan dot data dot length is false. Even if we find the minimum, we still have to go to the end of the list because there may be the minimal value can be at the end. Then we return it. Then now we go to the outer loop again. And this time we are going to the second value because the first value is sorted. Then we will check from the second value going. So second value becomes the mean. We move from third, again, we go through this until we get the minimal value. Then we go third. And so the coding here is the same concept as we have here. So the inner loop will scan through, then it swipe. Then after we swipe, the outer loop will start from two. Then go to the inner loop and then go through all the items. We find the minimum, then we swipe. Then we go to the outer loop. We are in the third value now. So that's what the outer loop does. So outer loop, we go to the next, that will shift to the next value. Then the inner loop will swipe through all the items and bring out the minimal value. Now, when we get the minimal value, we have a swap, met swap method here. This method will swap again. 
the minimum to the right position, to the position where it's supposed to be, then the item there will go to the, uh, the previous position of the minimum. So this is the method for swiping. Again, in Python to swipe, we just use the assignment operator. In Java, we need a third variable. So we have our temp variable. We put the data in this one to the temp. Then we put in this two to in this one. Then we put the temp back to in this two. So what we did is that in this one value goes to in this two, then in this two value goes to in this one. Now next is the, the selection sort array base method here. So again, this is another example of the same uh, selection. So here we have the mean location method. And that method mean location will locate the minimum value among the list. So you can see our previous code, we have all the two for loop, the outer for loop to move the position the inner for loop to go through that position to the end and get the minimum value, then we call the swap method to swap it. We can write the method also separately. So here we write the mean location. This will be the method to locate the minimum value in the list. So we assign first to the mean in this. So the first, we are zooming the first value. So we move to the second value. Uh, we are using the counter variable lock or location. So we say first plus one, we move to the next value. The location less than equal to the last, last will be the, la the last index. Then we increment. So in this case, we are using the comparable, Java comparable, uh, again, generic type. So here we said that if the comparable object comp element dot compare to the mean index is less than zero. This means we are going to give the location because the comparable have the least location. And if it's less than zero means the least location is less than the mean index, which was the first item that we said is the minimum. So if that is the case, we assign the location to mean index. So we'll go through this for loop and this for loop will go through all the items in the array to the end, then it will return the main index. And this will happen one at a time, one at a time. So now we are going to have our selection sort. In the selection sort, we are going to call the mean location method recursively inside the for loop from zero to the length uh, last index. So here we call the main location, assigned to main index, then we swap. Then we also have the swap method same as the previous. So let's analyze the selection sort. Here we say the number of item as assignment will be three n minus one equal to big O n. The number of item assignments. Now the number of key comparison will be n minus one plus n minus two all the way to the end. So averagely it will be n times n minus one over two. Now we are using two for loops. So that's the concept here. So here we get n square minus n. So we get half n square minus half n. And we know that in big old notation, n, when we have n square and n, we are going to ask the List or the item gets larger or n get larger, n square will be way bigger than n. So we are going to ignore big O n and we're going to have a big O n square. So this means selection sort uh, time complexity against big O n square. And this rather will even tell us from the for loop, you can see that we have two for loops. One for loop to go through one item, then the inner for loop will scan everything. The second follow up go so this make it again n square. So here we say selection sort does not depend on the initial arrangement of the data. So next is the insertion sort. 
Now, insertion sort orders a value by continuously inserting a particular value into a sorted subset of the list. So the first thing we have to consider always with insertion sort is the first item to be sorted in the sublist and sublist of the length one. So if I have only one item, then it's sorted. So we move to the insert the second item into the sorted sublist, shifting the first item if needed. Then we are going to insert the third item into the sorted sublist if shifting the other item is needed or so we shift it. We we'll repeat this until all the items are again sorted or they're in proper order. So the steps are very straightforward. Sort a list by moving each element to its proper place in the sorted portion of the list. Now tries to improve the performance of the selection sort. This reduces the number of key comparison. Again, comparing to selection sort, but both of them may have the same big O n square time complexity. So hopefully this example will get us the idea. Now in selection sort, what we do is that we scan first, we scan through all the items, find the minimal value. When we get the minimal value, we swap with the first position. Then we move to the second, we go through all the items, we find minimal value, we swap with the second item. But in session sort is different. In session sort, so we should assume the first item is sorted. So we move straight to the second. But when we compare second with the third value, we saw that they are not in good position, so we shift it. So we can see nine to six, we shift. So six came to the second position, now it's in the third position. Then we reach the fourth, nine and one. Wow, nine is way bigger than one. And we compare with six, then we shift it to the right position. So now we have one, three, six, nine. Next we have two. And two is smaller than nine and six and than three, so we shift it to the third position and the I mean, second position, and then three will move down. So we get one, two, three, six, nine. So let's see this example. We want to sort two, nine, five, four, eight, one, six. So first we arrange two, nine, five, four, eight, one, six. Again, in section sort, we are zooming the first item it's in the right position, so we start with nine. Nine, nine and five, we have to shift. So we shift, uh, we have two, nine and five, and we go through four. Four, two, we have to shift. So nine will come back and then five is in the front. Now we have nine, eight, we also have to shift. So we get eight, nine, we have one, one is way lesser, so one will shift and go to the front. So one goes to the front. Then we have eight, nine, six, but we have six is our last. We do the same thing, shift, so it will come after five. So here we are not swapping positions like selection sort. Insertion sort means we look at the right position, we, that's why it's called insection we insert the item at the right position one at a time. And this is another example. So we have two, nine, five, four, one, eight, one, six, and the same example. So here, we assume the first item is already sorted. We go to the second item is nine. So we need to shift it to the right. So five will come to second nine. The next nine and four, we need to shift it, but four will be in front of five. Then we are eight, we need to shift it. Eight comes before nine. Then we reach one, one have to go all the way to the front. Then we shift to the right. Then we go one, two, four, five, six, eight, nine, six. Now nine and six, six again is less than nine and eight, so we shift it. 
to the after five, we have six, eight, and nine. So now let's see the coding. Again, this code is in Java, so we have the insertion sort. So we have our first for loop, and the index will start from one to data dot length and index plus plus. Now here we assign the data index to the key. The type is generic, and also we assign index to the position. So now we say that why the position is greater than zero. Since we know index will be zero, there shouldn't be negative value at least from zero. So why position is greater than zero? And then data position minus one, comparing to the key, is also greater than zero. Then we are going to assign the data position minus one to data position. Then we decrement the position. And we also assign the, after we finish, uh, get off the while loop, we assign the key to the data position. So this is a shifting method, shifting the larger values to the right. So position minus one was the previous value, let's say zero and one. So what are we doing? We are assigning it to position. So we are shifting it to the right. Zero can be for one, but now we are shifting what? The zero to one. So we shift it to the right. That's if the value is large. If not, then this, the Y condition will be false. Then we go through the next item until uh, we go through all the items. So that's why the position we are not increment, rather de decrement. Because we're starting from the right, comparing the shift. So this is the insertion sort analysis, which is the average number of item assignment and key the key comparisons is one quarter n square plus big O n. Since we have n square, then again to be big O n square. So that's why we said insertion sort is kind of faster, better than selection sort in terms of the number of comparisons. But at the end, both have the same big O n square time complexity, average, average. So these are the, again, we'll cover the bubble sort in a second. So we can see that the bubble sort also gave us uh, a big O n square. Uh, selection sort, as we said, is big O n square. Insertion sort also is big O n square. And bubble sort is the, the most slowest one. Uh, bubble sort have more total comparison than selection sort. So in general, insertion sort is better than selection sort, and selection sort is better than bubble sort. But again, average, all of them have the same big O notation and square comparison. So let's cover the bubble sort. Here we say bubble sort order a list of values by repeatedly or continuously comparing neighboring elements and then swapping their position if necessary. So to be more specific, we say we scan the list, then we exchange the adjacent elements if they are not in a relative order. This will bubble the highest value to the top. So normally we'll scan the list from beginning and we we'll look for the largest number to the end. And by the time we reach the end, the largest value will be bubbled to the, to the end. Because what we do is that we swipe each. If the first value is greater than the second value, then we swipe. The second value is greater than the third value, we swipe, we go through the list. And that will be only one pass then we do continue doing the same thing. So we scan the list again, bubble of the second highest value. We repeat this until all the elements have been placed in their proper order. Now, this is a very good example. So here we have item 10, 7, 15, 5, 16 to sort. And so the first thing we do, we start from the top. We check, this is our first pass. 
all this is just one pass. So we go through the list, 10 and seven, no, 10 is bigger, so we swipe. Seven, nine is at the top, 10 and 19, we don't swipe, 19 is bigger. 19 and five, we swipe. So we can see five as the top, 19. Then 19 and 16 also we swipe, and that's it. So all this is just the first iteration of the loop. Then we move to the second iteration. We start all over again from seven, the top. So here we say seven and 10. We compare, we don't swipe, 10 is bigger. 10 and five, we swipe because five is less than 10. So 10 will be down here. Then 10 and 16, we don't swipe, we leave it, so we finish. Then we go to the third iteration. Third iteration now we have seven, five, and 10. We compare seven with five, we swipe. We compare seven with 10, we swipe. And with uh, seven and 10, we don't swipe because seven is less than 10. So the next iteration, we have only five and seven. And they're already in the right position, so we don't swipe, finish. So this will be more clear also. And we have two, nine, five, four, eight, one. So our first pass means we start from two, we compare two with five, we don't need to swipe, five with nine, we need to swipe. So now five is second, and then we also swipe four. Next nine, eight, we swipe nine and eight. Nine and one also we swipe, so this is our first pass, nine is the largest. So now we have to scan from two to one. And that's what we did here. Two, it's okay. Four, it's okay. But five, we have to swipe. Five is bigger than four. Then eight, it's okay. Now eight is the biggest. Eight and one, we have to swipe. So we have one and eight. So now we finish eight and nine. Next, we have two, four, five, four, which is what we are going to do. So two and four is in the right position. Four and five, we swipe one, we swipe four and five, then five and, uh, four and five, right position, five and one, we swipe it. So five, eight, nine is okay. Now two, one, four. Two is okay. Uh, we have one, two and one, and then the four. Because here we have five, eight, nine. So two, four, one, two, two and four, two is okay. Four and one, we swipe. Then we have only one, two. Two and one, no, we swipe. Then we have one, two, four, five, eight, nine. And that will be our fifth pass. So as we said earlier, the bubble sort also is n square. And we can see the code here. So again, the method name is bubble sorting. We have a variable name need next pass. We are boolean initializing with true. Now we save the outer for loop, which will again go through the list for us. Uh, so we start with one, the length, and if we need another pass. In a for loop, we scan through all the items. If we need to swipe, for example, here we say if the first item is greater than the second item, then we need to swipe. And the swipe again, we use the temp variable to swipe. Then by the time we end, we should get the assign true to need next pass. So again, sorting a list, bubble sort, and we have another code here. Again, that's our bubble sorting. So we need for loop for the first items to go through the items one at a time. Then we need a second for loop that will scan through to bubble the largest value out. So here again, we swipe. And the same code here again, we have two for loop. In a for loop, we scan through all the item one at a time. 
after the first pass. Uh, position the outer for loop will give us the pass. Then the inner for loop will scan through. And if we need to swipe, we swipe, then go to the second, third pass to the end. So a sorting uh, algorithm makes key comparisons and also moves the data. So we look for both the operation to analyze in the sorting algorithm. So as we said, the outer loop will execute n minus one times. So the last, we don't need to, last time only one value will be left. We don't need to do any comparison of more if we have only one after. So for each iteration, the inner for loop will execute certain number of times depends on the size of the list. So we say execute n times. There's one comparison per each iteration of the outer loop. So after the outer loop, one iteration we have, we go to the inner loop, we compare everything. So if it's n size, n times. So this make it to get, since we have two for loops, make us to get big O n square. So selection sort, insertion sort, and bubble sort use different techniques, but they all have a big O n score. But based on the techniques we saw, we saw that bubble sort have more comparison than selection sort and insertion sort. And also selection sort have more comparison than insertion. So among selection sort, insertion sort, and bubble sort, insertion sort is best, is better, Selection sort mess, then bubble sort is the worst. So selection and insertion sort of garrity are comparison-based sort of garrity. Again, their big notation is n squared. We can trace the execution of comparison-based sort garrity by using a graph called the comparison tree. So normally a comparison tree is a binary tree. So any sorting of garrity that sort a list by comparison of the case only it is the worst case. That's why we said again, bubble sorting is the worst. But well, bubble sorting selections are do totally comparisons. So again, that will be the end of our uh, lectures here. So hope to see the class again in our next lectures. Again, our next lectures, we are going to cover the concept of uh, quick sort, ready sort, and then the merge sort. So again, thank you.